Welcome back everyone to Learning with Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 12.232, okay? It says, the football player at A throws the ball in the YC plane at a speed VA equals to 50 feet per second and at an angle theta of A equal to 60 degrees with the horizontal. At the instant the ball is thrown, the player is at B and is running with constant speed along the line VZ in order to catch it. Determine this speed V of V so that he makes the catch at the same elevation from which the ball was thrown. Okay? So what they're showing us in here in the picture is basically we have our uh, player A is throwing the ball and then player B is trying to go and catch it. Okay? So we have some other uh, distance quantities that they're giving to us and they're just giving us uh, they're just telling also us that our theta of a is with respect to the z y plane and is measured from the horizontal which is the y okay the y um, axis so in order to solve this problem what we need to know is this how much is this distance how much is this distance in here and the reason that we need to know that is that uh, how much does my player B has to run in the y direction? We don't know from here all the way to C. So a way to find it from this point all the way to C is finding how much is this total distance from A to C. And if we know that distance, we know that we just subtract this 20 feet and we will keep uh, solving the problem and see if we can find this velocity, okay? So, as I said before, our main goal for now is to find our distance from A to C. And how are we going to find this? Well, we're going to utilize one of the kinematic equations that we learned in physics and other, or at the beginning of uh, this um, dynamics course. And then is that our position ha will be equal to our initial position plus the initial velocity multiplied by time. And what happened is that we don't have acceleration. In the y direction, we are assuming we have no wind, no drag force, or anything. Therefore, we don't have acceleration in this direction, right? So according to this, we're going to have, we're going to assume that this distance from here to here, well, that we're starting at, at the origin, meaning our initial position is zero then the rest is just going to be our initial velocity well we're given the velocity is going to be 50 multiplied by the cosine of 60 right so we got the velocity given this ba and we have the angle meaning that we can find its y component which is 50 cosine of 60 okay and we multiply by t now in here what happened is that we don't know how much this t is how much time will take for this ball to travel from our point A all the way to our point C. So what we can do is, okay, if we're working with our Y direction, we can get another equation if we start working with our Z direction, okay? So what happened with our Z direction? With our Z direction, we also have a velocity component, right? And what we can say is, okay, I can find if I can find uh, the time that this velocity lands into the same height as our a point a, then it's, it will be the same time that will take the ball to travel from a to c. So basically what I'm saying is that we can utilize the velocity in the z direction, the final velocity in the z direction, Okay, it's going to be equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration, which is a constant, mul multiplied by time. All right now, if we start with our right side, we know the velocity, the initial velocity in the z direction is going to be 50 sine of 60 degrees, and then we will have negative. 32.2 this is for the acceleration the gravitational acceleration multiplied by t okay but what about our left side what is our final velocity so i'm just going to draw a parabolic motion so 
we understand what I'm trying to imply it after and is that in our parabolic motion we have that we have our initial velocity in z and then we also know that at this highest point our velocity is equal to zero so what we can do is utilize this this uh, moment where our velocity is equal to zero and we also realize that this is halfway through so it will take half of the time so this is time divided by two and this is time divided by two when we're like in here right or what we can say is hey if it takes the same time to from here to here meaning to lose our velocity initial velocity from here to here it will be the same time that in order to gain a negative velocity it will be exactly the same but negative so if we know that we're gonna have a negative 50 sine of 60 at the end of our parabolic um, uh, motion that's how that's going to be our final velocity and in, um, in the z direction so now that we know this what we can do is just solve for time so if we solve for our time we will get equal to negative 50 multiplied by 60 and then we're going to have minus 50 multiplied by 60 and we're going to divide all this by negative 32.2 okay and we will see that our time if we plug this into our calculator let's see so we'll realize that our time that took us from uh from a to c is going to be 2.69 seconds if we round it out to two decimal places okay so now we can say okay if that's the time then i can find my distance az which is going to be 50 cosine of 60 multiplied by our 2.69 and plugging this into our calculator we will get that this is equal to 67.24 feet okay so now we know this distance from a to c meaning that we will know the distance from this point to here. So let's calculate that. This red distance, so from here all the way to C, how much will this distance be? Well, this distance will be our 67.24 minus 20, this 20 over here, all right? So this will be equal to 47.24 in here, okay? Now, the reason why we needed this distance is that now we can calculate the distance from C to B. And we can do that because of Pythagorean theorem. So we know that the distance from B to C is going to be equal to the square root of, and we will have 30 squared. This 30 goes from this for this distance from here to here that is given in here, plus our 47.24 square all right so now we're going to plug this into our calculator and we will realize that this is equal to 5 5.96 feet okay and so now that we have our distance so what we can say is okay the velocity needed for this player at B is going to be the total distance that we need to run, so from B to C, divided by the time that it takes me to get there. So the minimum velocity that we have to have at our player B is going to be 55.96, the distance in feet, divided by the time that I have, which is 2.69. I have 2.69 seconds because that's the distance that takes me from A all the way to C, right? So we plug this into our calculator. We will realize that this will give me 20.A rounded up feet per second. And we just found our final answer for our velocity at B, 20.A feet per second. So if you guys liked the video, please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.